Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine with our first report for October 2021. Bring on the stripers and blues, right? Can't happen soon enough. Hey, before we get into the bite this week, some big news to share with regard to our Northeast Striped Bass Study. First, I want you to pick up the October edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's relevant, and I'll tell you why. That October edition just went to print this week. It's gonna be in your tackle shops, in your local convenience stores. Uh, maybe you found a copy this week on Wednesday when you're getting your free copy at Wawa. Uh, subscribers, you should have that copy by the weekend ahead. But on page 26, there's a full write-up about the Northeast Striped Bass Study with gray fish tag research. You'll find that article uh, that as of the day we were printing this past Sunday, September 26th, we could account for four of the five mini PSAT devices that were put into those jumbo stripers earlier this year. Four of those five started to upload to the satellite. We, didn't, we don't have the tracking data yet. Uh, our folks at Gray Fish Tag Research are pouring through all that information. We hope to have that uh, and all the results in our November edition, but October is an update on where those tags were, where some of the tags popped off. We did not have, as of Sunday, as of this past weekend, a report on the final tag, the, the, the Hail Mary tag. That was the fish that we tagged on Chuck Manny's Timon on June 17th. Well, as unbelievable as this may sound, we spoke to Gray Fish Tag Research this week, Roxanne Wilmer on Monday morning, and she said, well, we've got some data on that last fish, that fish that we tagged June 17th, the fish we called Hail Mary. She sent me the data, she sent me lat lawn numbers, and I plugged it into my Navionics on my phone, did a screen grab, and I sent it up to our friends in Long Island, Matt Broderick and Mike Caruso. That fish, that tag, we identified someplace on the beach, a West Hampton beach in Long Island, someplace in between a couple of jetties. So when I sent the screen grab to Mike, well, you're not gonna believe this. We actually found the device. We are very, very lucky. This, this program is, is, was worth the time. Um, it's incredible that we didn't take a lot of time. These things are so accurate, it took us to the exact spot, literally. We were about 100 yards from where we walked down from the parking lot to the beach and we recovered this thing. And Matt, I, I, just, I, just, can't, I just can't believe it. I'm so elated that we got this. And there's gonna be a lot of stories to tell about this one, but this is like the biggest story I think we could tell is that we found it. More to come, guys. <laughs> Seriously, I had to pick my job. Unbelievable, right? Last year when that tag popped up along the beach of Fortescue, the fish called Independence, I was traipsing around the marshes for two days looking for that tag. And Matt and Mike go up to the beach within 15 minutes, kick over a piece of seaweed, and there's the tag right there. Again, look for the full story in the October edition of the Fisherman Magazine. You can find it online. You can see it for free if you're not a subscriber, but if you've already visited several pages of the Fisherman website and you can't get access, enter your username and password. And if you don't have one, it means you're not a Fisherman subscriber. So you have to subscribe to the Fisherman magazine. Again, this tag was from Hail Mary, tagged aboard Chuck Manny's boat, time in June 17th. And I can't wait to see the data from this fish 95 days of travels. Where'd she spend the summer? How far did she go? Did she go anywhere? But again, we're gonna have all the information, the final results in the November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Uh, and really just extraordinary, exciting information. The Northeast Striped Bass Study with Gray Fish Tag Research. Right now, let's head back to the Long Island beaches with another message from our owner, publisher, Mike Caruso, about a very special event coming up this weekend, October 2nd. Hey everybody, it's Mike Caruso, publisher and owner of The Fisherman Magazine, and I'd like to extend an invitation to all of you to join us for a special memorial celebration for Fred Galafaro. This will be this Saturday, October 2nd at 2 p.m. at the Robert Moses State Park, the beach, Field 4. Uh, be a great day for all of us to be together, share stories, uh, and uh, really celebrate Fred's incredible legacy. I hope you can join us. 
Hey, if you're heading out there to uh, Robert Moses uh, Field 4 this Saturday, look for me. I will be there. It should be a wonderful event in honor of the late Fred Gallifrey. Oh, my God. It's, it's so hard to say that. I know. It, it's hard. I, and, in fact, I think Fred's playing a little trick on me this week. The winds this week have been pretty much uh, unfriendly. Stiff south, southwest, southeast. Uh, and the gusts have kept me off the sedges where I wanted to be. I've been hoping for a little bit of northwest in the forecast to, to flatten things out, to chase some bait out of the creeks, to cool off the water temperature. Lo and behold, Friday night, winds lay down. Saturday looks like a beautiful day. Looks very tasty. I know, Fred, it's a test. I'll be there. It's not to say, of course, that you need northwest winds or that you need those northeast, that tumultuous wash to throw some bucktails into the wash to catch some striped bass uh, or some bluefish. But it does look like things are starting to get a little bit interesting out along the front beaches at the Jersey Shore. I've been watching mullet schools uh, make their way uh, south through the cuts and sloughs along the central Jersey beaches uh, for most of this week, catching some cocktail blues that are, uh, that are in the mix as well. Do I feel like we need that water temperature to drop a little bit. But I did find out on Wednesday, Joe Albanese let me know he found a mega bluefish blitz Wednesday morning. Uh, he found it all to himself along the beaches of Sandy Hook. The only other angler that he saw uh, that was in sight was a couple of beaches down and he was into them as well. Uh, but Joe did say that at Giglio's and at Seabright, they heard of bass, albies, and even some tuna reported. You know, with that tuna bite, I'm just wondering if this is gonna be one of those years where we get reports of surf caught bluefin this fall in the melees. So speaking of which, I mentioned the bluefin bite, it's been off the hook, right? It's both literally and figuratively. I'm talking about off Sandy Hook, between Sandy Hook up through Ambrose out to Rockaway Reef. Uh, guys like Captain Frank Wags of Fin Chasers, they've been in the mix, uh, getting in some of these big bluefin on the live line bunker. Uh, it seems like one of those things uh, that's uh, uh, during the week, the bluefin are a little bit hungrier. You get to the weekend, you get a fleet of 100, 200 boats, and as much as you don't like the bluefin crowds, neither do the bluefin. So I think those fish are sounding. But certainly those fish are there. For those uh, panicking, about the word from NOAA Fisheries about the general category closure. Now, for those of you with an HMS angling permit or exclusive for hire permits, uh, you're probably well aware already. But for folks who are going crazy, general category, to the best of my knowledge, is commercial. All right, so that was a commercial closure, at that general category, all right? So if you have your HMS angling permit, for example, everything will be okay. Just remember Chip Diller. Animal House, all is well. Got another surf report at Long Branch from Omar Espinosa this week. He said he had a lot of blues from four to nine pounds and one 14 pound striper, a 33 incher. That one took a teaser. Hey, that's great advice, Omar. It's, it's a really good reminder to folks. Uh, often uh, people don't think about a teaser this time of year, uh, maybe later in the fall when it's, uh, you know, when you're matching some of those sand eel hatches, uh, you've got the tins or you've got these new Joe Bags uh, sand eel imitations and you're tying that teaser ahead of it. Um, but you might want to think about it if you're throwing an SP minnow or a swarter or even a small uh, plastic at this point, especially when we have all these little baits around, because it's not just the peanut bunker and mullet, but a lot of rain bait. Uh, I did the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo over the weekend, met a lot of great folks. Uh, who watched this video and subscribed to the Fisherman Magazine. One of them was a Fisherman subscriber named Mike Samaskowicz, who saw last week's video about my, my problem with matching the hatch with stripers on the sedges. Don't you know he stopped by the booth, brought me a couple of his hand-tied flies uh, to try out. Great imitation here, as a matter of fact. Uh, a nice little rainfish imitation. I told him I was going to tie that in front of a, of a teaser, uh, even if I'm throwing some of those small plastics. Um, but these, these flies, you know, again, make great imitations. It's also a reminder that this is the time of year to start stocking up for the fall run. Uh, Mike sent me a, gave me a beautiful little sand eel teaser as well. These things are going to be like gold, these different sand eel imitations, those sand eel te teasers, the whites and blues, the, the yellows and blacks, whatever you can get. You know what we're facing with this pandemic and delivery of products, right? 
Uh, think about what has happened in the past once we get into late October and November and that one lure, the one tin, those teasers, whatever's working, the, the bone SP minnow, that's the thing you got to have. And you, when you get to it, it's gone. So start planning now uh, and start stocking up for the fall run. Everything that you've looked at with your fishing logs in the past that worked, if you don't have enough of them, get them now, get into the shops. And if you're fishing without a teaser uh, in the surf, just give yourself enough extra leader length so that you're, you can tie one on the fly if you need it. Just a simple dropper loop so that you can tie a teaser uh, several or a few inches above that clip where your lure. Um, so if you're hitting the suds and you're casting and casting and you're just not getting the hits, you've tried everything in your bag and you've, especially if you're seeing those small baits in the wash, be prepared to improvise and adapt along the way. Tie those droppers onto an extra long length of leader that you can put on those teasers. In Brigantine this week, Andy at Riptide reported the Bluefish Blitz Absecan Inlet late last week to end the month of September. They were hitting anything shiny that you threw at them. Most were in the two to five pound range, but a few larger models over 10 pounds as well. And he also mentioned in the reports a handful of striped bass and plenty of kingfish in the mix as well. As reported by Nick Konachewski, this week at thefisherman.com, Joe at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle down there in Cape May said the local jetties are still holding a variety of species, including weakfish, kingfish, bass, and blues. And they're also hoping for a nice little run of red drum. Uh, for all, with all those mullet, the finger mullet moving down the beaches, they're hoping to get a few red drum this season. And geez, fingers crossed for an excellent fall bite with those speckled trout come October into November as well. For sure, from the reports we're getting though, north to south, there are plenty of weak fish in the mix. Um, uh, especially for those putting in their time, think magic hours working into dark. Uh, a lot of the pink finesse, the pink plastics are working. My man Pedro Ildefonso is still holding strong in his summer into fall weak fish hunts and is doing well there in sight of Lady Liberty. Way to go, Pedro. By the way, back to the beaches. If you're looking to expand on your beach access this fall, the folks from the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association recently held a very successful beach driving clinic on Zoom. Yeah, you know, Zoom, it's all that COVID stuff. Well, Doug Toler, Taylor, he tells me that NJBBA is offering another one on Wednesday, October 20th. Beach driving clinic from the comfort of your own home. You have to register for this so that Doug and the NJBBA folks can send you an email so that you can log in. So if you want some advice from NJBBA on beach driving basics and getting around on the beach, go check out the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association Facebook page, or simply email Doug at fishtrek, with a K, at comcast.net. As a relatively new beach driver myself, I'll probably see you there. A reminder, New Jersey Saltwater Anglers Black Sea Bass reopens next Friday, October 8th. It's a 10 fish bag, 12 and a half inch size limit. I would imagine that those big humpbacks are hungry they're large and they're plentiful. So if you're hunting around this week for uh, gator bluefish, gearing up for some giant sea bass starting next week, don't forget about the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's open now for subscribers. You've got weak fish on there, you've got jumbo blues, and yet you have black sea bass. For the latest update on that contest, let's check in with my man, Tim Smith, back at our Fisherman Magazine New York studios. Some major movement on the Dreamboat standings. The neck and neck race for the number one position swapped this week with a 3.49 pound porgy entered by Joseph Yam. Joseph now holds the number one position over Henry Piacentino. What will happen next week as the drama unfolds? Other entries include Stephen Lund's 7.5 pound weak fish, Rocco Calise's 2.87 pound sea robin, and a 17 pound bluefish from Derek Chiro. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. So, right up until those black sea bass are back in play next week at the Jersey Shore, the local boats are into bluefish. Some are doing night trips out of Manasquan. 
The Shark River boats, like the last lady putting a mixed bag together. Uh, I think Ralph's doing a ling tri trip coming up. But young Ryan McCaffrey here was on his first trigger trip this week, did well with Captain Ralph. Those folks and many others still getting into the blackfish action as well with those green crabs. Same thing can be said the farther into South Jersey you go. You've still got plenty of triggers and who knows what you'll find off the beaches this fall if you're jumping on one of those head boats or charter boats. John Bouchette said he and his son Stephen were out about two miles off of Wildwood last week off the Ferris wheel, caught this 50 inch cobia that they released. On the other hand, not releasing this one, <laughs> Phil DiLorenzo was out with Al Rotuno from the Staten Island Fishing Club last week. They were live lining bunker out at Rockaway Reef looking for some of those bluefin. Not the first time I've heard this. Several cobia have been caught in the midst of those bluefin, but they didn't find any tuners, but they did find this cobia, and this one was not released. Took this one home for the grill, tasty. Special time of year here. The mixture of the tropical systems, and those warm eddies coming in, and then as those bait fish start to finally make their way out of the estuaries, out the inlets, it brings all matter of life close in and into the back looking for a meal. Chris Kayser sent me this video last week. He was tossing an eight inch pink zinger sluggo out around the structure at night on the Shrewsbury last week. 10 pound braid, that reel started to dump. It was screaming. Chris thought he had the striped bass of a lifetime. Nope, looks to us like it was a, a, a Kemp, perhaps a loggerhead, not sure. I, I, I'm not sure if I ever heard of one of these jumbo sea turtles taking a whack at a plastic bait, but there you go. It was released safely. I don't even think Chris took it out of the water and that jig found its way right into the top jaw of that turtle. Chris said it was 44 inches long from tail to snout from the way they can measure it. <coughs> That's something. No Pocono Outdoors report this week. Uh, uh, George Shower is probably chasing fish around someplace. But I will point you again back to that October edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Your subscribers are getting it this week. If you're not a subscriber, do so because it gives you full access to thefisherman.com. You don't get it any other way. But look for the October edition out this week. And pay attention for the, the um, trout stocking report for the Garden State with a few tips and tactics from our own Tom P, the man from Rack and Fin Radio, inside the local edition of that latest edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Now, Tom's final offshore report for the year is inside that edition. For you canyon runners, it does look like you have a little window here on Friday to hit the offshore grounds, but that long period swell uh, from that monster Hurricane Sam, which hopefully continues to track up and out of here, uh, it looks to be bringing a few bits of bumpy seas into the region by Saturday night into Sunday. So just keep an eye out on that offshore weather forecast. It does make it difficult this time of year. Great offshore action, but with all those storms the tumultuous seas, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Fair winds and following seas, it's what we always strive for, right? A final adieu, I guess, this week to my good friend Fred Gallifaro. And we will do, be doing that this Saturday out on Long Island, Robert Moses Field 4. I expect to be there about 1 o'clock with a couple of other buddies. My friends, I hope to see you there. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.